Okay, we're continuing on right afterwards, um, just so I didn't lose any of the screens for you. And we are saying abandoned articles consisting of bacon, sugar, camp equipment, cooking utensils, clothes, household furniture, stoves and gridirons, carpenters, tools, blacksmith, anvil, crowbars, drills, augers, gold washers, chisels, axes, trunks, spades, plows, large grindstones, baking ovens, kegs, and barrels are everywhere. Pardon me. One company once in the Black Hills finally discarding an entire sawmill they plan to operate in California. All right, that's interesting. I apologize, I'm just going to pause for a second. Uh, it's going to be like this for a little while. You might want to forward ahead in the video if this is boring to you. You might want to check out the next video if it continues on. I think we're going to get to a cutscene soon. looks on the map that we're fairly close to California. I don't know why the game exactly does it. Maybe it's to be uh, a bit educational as well. In any event, um, this is kind of like Oregon Trail without the fun uh, for the time being. But we're going to go through it, and if you find it interesting, um, I'm, I'm glad you do. Anything of any value that was discarded was usually ruined in some way so that successive travelers would not be able to use the item. Well, that's nice. As for your company, the captain orders that every item that isn't essential to the trip must be discarded, no matter how small. Fortunately for you, the solid gold coin you you brought with you from Brooklyn was in your pocket, so you still have that. The letter from your long-lost brother Jake was in your hip pocket, along with the gold flake under the stamp, so that's still with you. Your family photo fits in your pocket, so that isn't discarded. The company decides to allow you to keep the Bible, just in case somebody needs it later. Everything else is thrown from the wagon, besides the trail. Surprisingly, we're the only ones that have a Bible. And so that's pretty much all we had in our inventory, from what I recall. The only way, we guess we have a bank statement for other stupid things, but the only way to cross the North Platte River is by ferry. The line of wagons waiting to cross the river sometimes reaches 20 miles in length. Wow. And patient companies cut down trees and make their own rafts for their wagons. The scenery changes once again. The landscape is barren and dotted with sagebrush. This desert-like region has a, wild, a few widely scattered ponds, most of which are poisonous, pools of alkaline water. It is a gruesome sight to see the results of one of your animals partaking of the poison. Ugh. Surrounding these alkaline ponds, the sage bushes are outnumbered only by animal carcasses. That's a nice little trip we have here. I guess um, I won't complain too much about plane travel in the future. Um, it is a welcome relief to pass from the alkaline territory into the region of Sweetwater River, where the water is just that, sweet. Yeah, I guess uh, waiting for delays at the airport just uh, still, I'd say, beats checking out some animal carcasses and poisonous ponds. Though I don't know who does a better job of keeping hold of your luggage. Um, okay, at the west end of the Sweet uh, Water Valley, the trail crossed the broad plateau to South Pass, the halfway point of your cross-country trek. A short break from the seemingly never-ending toil of crossing the country, it's taken at the South Pass to celebrate the reaching... Uh, the halfway point of your journey, which coincides with the Continental Divide, you're now on the Pacific side of the Rockies. Halfway through? Looks like we're more than that, but... Eh, maybe not. I don't know. Seems a little bit further than halfway, even from Independence. But, regardless. Alright, so now it's bringing us to the next one of these. I apologize, folks. It looks like this video is going to be entirely on these maps, but I did promise you to show you the game, so I'll show you the whole thing. Your wagon train is now entering an arid stretch of land. It will be 50 miles before you, you or the animals will be able to taste the refreshing cool water of the Green River. Every container is filled to the brim with life-giving water that will be so valuable for the next few days. The trail across this desolate wasteland is strewn with dead oxen. The animals as well as you are parched and desperately in need of water. Alright, we have actually something to do. The captain bellows a command, and the animal team comes to a halt. You are at the top of the steep hill, overlooking the Green River. And we are going to pause for one second. Alright folks, sorry there's a little bit of delay when I try to pause the game recently. I switched the uh, hotkeys on my keyboard to uh, pause the video just because I think the old one was somehow causing DOSBox to close just like it did last time. So I didn't want that to happen again. We have saved as Green River. And what we're going to do is lock the wheels here. Using your Yankee ingenuity, you put the chains through the wagon wheels to keep the wheels from turning. I don't know what really makes it Yankee ingenuity to do that. I figured anyone could do it, but... And then we're going to unhitch animals. 
that is a brilliant idea. As thirsty as those animals are, they would have pulled the wagon along with everybody inside, over the edge of the steep hill. You are responsible for saving the animal team, the wagon, and the lives of your fellow company members. You are to be commended. Now, are we supposed to believe that this whole wagon here can fit everybody in it? No, I guess there's a whole trail behind it. Okay. <laughs> Look, you can sort of see the red parts, not really that well done, but it looks like uh, there are wagons that are actually overturned and wagon wheels and stuff, so it looks like it wasn't the first time oxen have dragged um, everybody to death. What amazes me, though, is just how incompetent it appears the captain and whatever other leaders there are, are that we are responsible for all these so pretty common sense sort of things. In any event, I guess it's a good idea they brought Jared along. When the oxen return refreshed and ready to go, you assist in hitching the wagon. Why not? It looks like the company is ready to attempt to, s to attempt the steep hill. The wagon starts moving, so you courageously get in. Things are looking good. Uh, tell me this isn't another one of those things can go wrong scenes. So I guess the oxen are more careful when... No, there's wagons behind us, so we're supposed to believe everybody's in that little wagon. Alright. Well, they congratulate us. During the section of the trail, the going gets tough. There are no rivers going your direction to follow. It's just seemingly endless miles of gravel, rock, sand, dust, steep hills to climb, and difficult descents. I gotta say, the people who did this the first time had the right stuff, I guess. Was it Lewis and Clark, maybe? Eh, I don't know. I don't want to get myself in trouble being completely historically ignorant, but, um... Whoever it was, uh, probably was, um... Uh, taking quite a gamble. Alright, as difficult as it is to keep on going, you have to keep those big wheels turning. And I mentioned before about how the uh, airlines uh, may not do the best job keeping your luggage. Well, I have a, a brief anecdote about that, but um, I'll hopefully have time to give it to you in a second. Anyway, the trail gets slightly easier for a few miles as you follow the Bear River. This is a welcome relief. So I had a friend who we were going on some sort of, I guess, business trip slash, well, a business trip we'll call it. In any event, um, we were going about a two-hour flight. There were about ten people on the flight, and... Somehow they lost his luggage, even though there was no layover, there was no stopping. Um, it was out of two very small airports, or at least the first one was a very small airport. Alright, so anyway, I just sometimes can't fathom how the airlines work. In any event, here are the trail forks. The southern route is called Hudspeth's Cutoff. That route is slightly shorter as the crow flies, but it misses the stop at Fort Hall. Your captain takes you on the northern route towards the fort, so we're taking the longer route, I guess. Make sure we go to the fort, which I guess seems like a great idea, a good idea. And, um, yeah, another people who had the right stuff probably were the people who were actually serving at these forts uh, in the middle of nowhere. I guess it, you better hope that you were married beforehand or something, because uh, chances of finding a spouse probably wouldn't be too good. Alright, after leaving Fort Hall, the company follows the Snake River through a portion of Idaho. It's kind of weird that we go all the way through Idaho to get to California, but I guess it's probably the best or easiest route or the well-known route at the time. Yeah, I'd have to say, even with losing my luggage, I would, um, or losing somebody's luggage, I would have to say this, uh, this is probably a lot worse. A common landmark is the steeple rocks, two pointed columns of rock prominently standing two to three hundred feet in height. It's a relief for your captain to see this landmark come into view. He lets everyone know that the company is right on course. Uh, And I hopefully we can make the California by the end of this video. We've got enough give, I think, that we can that we can do it. I do hate that it takes up time trying to bring up these blocks. Okay. From Steeple Rocks, your team continues westward. About 90 miles west of Steeple Rocks, you encounter the Humboldt River. The Humboldt River is a real lifesaver. It's more like a mud ditch than a river, but it preserves life through 300 miles of arid, hostile wasteland. Tombstones of unfortunate travelers and carcasses lie everywhere along the trail. As I recall in the other routes, you don't have as much of these sort of uh, map, map scenes with all these um, pop-up boxes and such. So, 
This is the only time you'll have to endure this. All right. Although the Humboldt River supplied water to the people and animals passing by, there are now other factors to challenge the company. Fatigue is taking its toll on people and animals who must walk day after day after day, breathing dust and pulverized dung. The continual complaining of company members is adding even more tension. There were also diggers, Indians of the Shoshone, and I'm not gonna try tribes. The diggers steal and kill the precious oxen or mules possessed by the travelers, the traveling teams. Well, that's not very nice. Gold seekers who have lost their animals are also resorting to stealing animals from other companies. Oh, that's that's the uh, spirit. All right. Well, we're coming close to the end. I'm gonna see if we can get off this map at least. I think there's a cutscene coming coming up, uh, and we are getting pretty close to me having to kill the video. But I'll give it a second or so more to get out of here. Here the trail forks again, requiring another decision on the part of your captain. Choices are the Lassen Cutoff or the Truckee River, and my choice is to pause for now and we will be back.